2,687 clues have come and gone, but 26 new ones are headed your way as part of this 63rd episode of Disney 100 Jeopardy. Welcome in. As always, I am your host, Brian Perry, and thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate each and every one of you joining me every week to test your knowledge on wonderful world of Disney. And if you join me every week, you know what's next. It is time for the rules on your screen. Rule number one, to have fun. Rule number two, if you want to cheat, I couldn't care less. So you can pause the video, look it up, cheat, because I won't know you're doing so, so be my guest. In last week's episode 62, the final Jeopardy category was stage and screen. I'll go into that a little bit more in a little bit, but first, We've got four other categories I'm about to test you on. So what say you? We see what they are. The first category you'll be playing, Disney Mania albums. Yep, I'm changing the order a little bit this week. But in last week's episode 62, I did a Disney Mania category. That was all about fight scenes in different Disney movies, a play on the WrestleMania term. And then people reminded me in the comments, hey, Disney Mania was actually a thing that I forgot about from the early 2000s. So that's what this category is all about. The music on those Disney Mania albums that ran from, I want to say, 02 to about 2010. The second category you'll be playing, logos. I'll show you a blurred logo and you'll have to squint your eyes and tell me what the logo is actually for, obviously related to the Walt Disney Company. The third category you'll be playing, Bambi. Yep, shout out to my Bambi fanatics who were upset that I didn't include Bambi in the April showers category last week. That's fair. That's, that's a fair uh, grudge you can hold against me. I thought it might have been too easy, if I'm being honest. But now you get five Bambi clues coming your way in this episode 63. The fourth category, it's your theme park category of the week. Quick service at the Magic Kingdom. Five clues all about places you can grab a quick bite to eat at the world's most famous theme park. And the fifth and final category returning from last week. You already know what it is, but you know what? Before I dive into what the category is about, I could use some help. Hi, I'm Tony Award winner James Monroe Iglehart. The fifth category in today's episode is stage and screen. Well, you'll have to answer five clues about performers who have appeared on Broadway in Disney shows or movies. That's right, stage and screen returns for this episode 63. And a huge shout out and thank you to James Monroe Iglehart, the Broadway legend for helping out with this episode 63. James is also a huge Disney Parks fan, so uh, respect right there. He came to the Magic Kingdom when I was a performer there back, I think, in 2019. And I saw myself in his Instagram story and it made my day. So full circle moment for me here on Disney Jeopardy. So thanks again, James. All right, it is now time for the easiest round of the game, the Cupcake Round. Each of these clues are worth just 200 points each. Hopefully you go five for five, bank a thousand points under your belt, and get this game started on the right foot. We kick things off with Disney Mania Albums for 200. In 1998, this artist released her debut single, Reflection, for the animated film Mulan. The same song would go on to be featured on the original Disney Mania a few years later. Who is the former Mickey Mouse Mouseketeer, Christina Aguilera? She would actually go on to make another version of Reflection 22 years later, the live action form of the movie. We are on to logos now. Look closely. Can you identify what this logo is for? They did just change the color a little bit. It used to just be blue. Do you like the new teal, aqua, or whatever it is now? Uh, the correct answer is Disney+. Plus. Third clue of the game brings us to Bambi for 200 points. One of his first friends, this rabbit, helps Bambi learn his first word. Who is Thumper? On to our first clue from Magic Kingdom Quick Service. 
Home to the Astro Oregon playing Sunny Eclipse, this Magic Kingdom quick service location is its busiest. I feel like I remember reading once that Cosmic Rays is not only Magic Kingdom's busiest quick service fast food location, but one of the busiest in all of America, which I guess makes sense since it's located in the heart of the Magic Kingdom. But that is your correct answer, Cosmic Rays. We move on to the final clue on the board for the cupcake round. It's a 200-pointer from stage and screen. Performing in both Rent and Wicked, this Disney legend was a Broadway star before joining the casts of 2007's Enchanted and 2013's Frozen. Quite frankly, there's no way I'm doing a stage and screen category without including Disney legend Edina Menzel. That does it for the cupcake round. Hopefully you did bag all 1,000 points you possibly could as we move on now to the second round for the slightly more difficult 400-point clues. We start with Disney Mania. Hayden Panettiere sang a version of this 1961 Disney song on Disney Mania 5. Selena Gomez followed with her own version on Disney Mania 6. What is Cruella de Vil? Cruella de Vil, Cruella de Vil. Big difference there is that Selena got a music video out of it, so there you go. We move on to the second clue from Logos. Here comes your blurry image. Can you identify what that logo is for? That will be the American Broadcasting Company, ABC. We're moving on to Bambi's second clue now. After becoming friends with Bambi early in the film, this skunk names one of his sons after the title deer. Who is Flower? Hurry up, Bambi. Yes, Papa, I'm coming. Let's go eat again at a different Magic Kingdom quick service location. Located in Fantasyland, this quick service location has the title of Disney's second animated feature in its name. What is Pinocchio's village house? House. I feel like you have to say it like that. It's not house. It's definitely not house. It's house. Here comes clue number 10 as we finish off the 400 point round. It belongs to stage and screen. The producers, my second favorite Broadway show of all time behind Hamilton, still holds the record for most Tony Awards won with 12. Its two stars, Nathan Lane and Matthew Broderick, had previously worked together seven years before the show's premiere on this Disney animated feature. Before they were Max and Leo in The Producers, Nathan Lane and Matthew Broderick were Timon and Simba in The Lion King. Under the right circumstances, a producer could make more money with a flop than he could with a hit. There you go, 10 clues down. Hopefully you're doing pretty well as we head for the halfway point of the game. And speaking of the halfway point of the game, the exact halfway point on the board is pretty important. You'll see why as we move on to the 600 point clue for Disney Mania albums. The Jonas Brothers appear on Disney Mania 4 singing a song written for this famous attraction. They sing Yo Ho, which of course is for Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> We're on to another logo now. This one's worth 600 points. Look closely. Can you make out what's blurred out here? That would be the logo for the one and only Mighty Ducks. So the Anaheim Ducks of the National Hockey League are no longer owned by Disney. They haven't been owned by Disney in 
over 15 years, but when they were owned by Disney, they were known as the Mighty Ducks, and yep, that was their logo. You might have seen that logo in D2, the Mighty Ducks uh, sequel film, which is, as you know, the greatest movie ever made. We move on now to Bambi's third clue of the game. And there you go, I told you it was going to be important. It is time for another Daily Double. Why is that? Well, this clue, the 600-point clue from Bambi, happens to be the 1,700th clue in Disney 100 Jeopardy history. And as many of you know, I give you a Daily Double every 100 clues. So, with that said, what is your confidence level when it comes to Bambi? Make those wagers right now. You've got five. Four, three, two, one, done. Okay, let's read the clue and see if you will walk away with more points. Bambi's significant other. And time is up. I didn't know if I should write Bambi's girlfriend, Bambi's wife, Bambi's princess. Bambi's significant other works though, right? Correct answer is Faline. Oh, Bambi, don't you remember me? I'm Celine. So there you go. Hopefully you bagged a million points after going all in on the Daily Double. And you continue that momentum now as we head over to the Magic Kingdom for the third time. Reel in delicious seafood and other New England-inspired favorites at this multi-level restaurant just a few feet away from the Haunted Mansion. The correct answer is Columbia Harbor House. I used to eat at Columbia Harbor House all the time when I lived down there, and I will say this, I always thought that their salmon if you're a salmon person, was just as good as any table service salmon. So, I don't know if they use the same salmon or what. Either way, Columbia Harbor House, an underrated gem. We move on to the final clue of the third round. We're going on stage for stage and screen. This actor has quite the range from playing a former president on Broadway to singing Under the Sea in 2023's live action, Little Mermaid. He sang Under the Sea because he was the voice of Sebastian in The Little Mermaid. It is the one and only David Diggs. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. You won't tell him. I won't tell him. And I will stay in one piece. You got it? Got it. Sorry, what'd you say again? I'm a dead crab. And I know I mentioned it a few episodes ago, but if you are a fan of Broadway or musical theater in general, make sure you check out Central Park on Apple TV because it is awesome and has a great cast, including Mr. Diggs. We move on now to the fourth round, the second most difficult round of the game. These clues are worth 800 points, and they start with Disney Mania. A new version of Kiss the Girl by this former high school musical star appeared on Disney Mania 5. Who is Ashley Tisdale? There you see her sitting there across the way. No, it wasn't until recently that I realized that Fantasmic in Walt Disney World just basically plays a Disney Mania CD before the show. Because every single song here, I feel like, is in the Fantasmic pre show. We move on now. Here comes your fourth logo of the game. This one is a little harder. Correct answer is Disney Vacation Club, DVC. And I know as the years go by, logos tend to get simplified, but this is a downgrade because look at this old one. Yeah, give me the old one all day. We move on to the third clue of the 800 point round. It belongs to Bambi. Bambi and Feline have this many fawns. Correct answer is two. We have two kids. Look! Two of them. Oh! <laughs> oh. 
We are moving on to quick service for the fourth time. Casey's Corner on Main Street, USA offers you over half a dozen different kinds of this entree. Mickey's first words. I don't, I, I don't want anyone to be upset that I called a hot dog an entree. If you go on their menu, it says it's an entree. I don't know if I would consider it an entree, I guess, but it, that's what it says. So take it up with Disney if you don't like that I called it an entree, but the correct answer is hot dog. Final clue before we get to the 1,000 point round, it belongs to stage and screen. To hear this performer's voice, you can check out Disney's 2022 film, Strange World. To see him on Broadway, you would have had to check out 2018, Sunday, in the park with George. He was also Mysterio in Spider-Man Far From Home. Nope, that doesn't count. If you just guessed it now, that doesn't count. Nope, nope, nope. You had to say it before I started talking. The correct answer is Jake Gyllenhaal. How far down does it go? How are you my dad? Well, when two people love each other... Stop talking! Stop talking! So there you have it. Six clues remain in this episode 63, including Final Jeopardy. But before we get there, it is time for the most overly dramatic soundtrack infused unnecessarily spotlighted part of the game the 1000 point round hit it i mean we have a broadway-esque category in this game so you know i had to do the spotlights today okay here we go first 1000 point clue of the game belongs to disney mania here we go Jordan Pruitt sings this song on Disney Mania 6, a song originating from 2007's Enchanted. Correct answer is Ever Ever After. Here comes your final logo of the game worth 1,000 points. All right, this one is blurred out except for the very end. That's because if I blurred that out too, it literally just looks like text because again, we're simplifying logos here in 2024, I guess. But can you guess what this is? I feel like maybe I should have blurred it a little more now that I look at it. I don't know, was it too easy? No? Maybe not, I don't know. Either way, the correct answer is Adventures by Disney. Three clues remain on the board before Final Jeopardy. Here comes Bambi's for a thousand. Thumper teaches Bambi how to say his first word, bird, but he also teaches him his second word, which is this. Bird was first and butterfly was second. No, that's not a bird. That's a butterfly. Butterfly. You're probably pretty full by now, but I hope you have room for one more quick service clue. If you want a good spot for a parade, head over to Pecos Bill in Frontierland. The name of the restaurant comes from the character shown in this Disney animated film. I remember I was blown away the first time I went back and watched Melody Time, which is your correct answer, because at the end of that movie, you're introduced to Pecos Bill, and I had been eating at Pecos Bill's in Magic Kingdom for years. I said, oh my gosh, that's where the name comes from? Are you serious? And speaking of that restaurant, rumor has it, it might be rebranded relatively soon to fit in with Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which is opening this summer, the Splash Mountain replacement. So we'll see. If you're a Pecos Bill fan, you might want to rush on down to Magic Kingdom and eat there before it is no more. Okay, it is now time for the final clue on the board. It belongs to stage and screen, and you know what? Instead of me reading it to you, why don't we get a Tony Award winner to do it? Hi, I'm James Monroe Aglehart. I won a Tony for playing the genie in Disney's Aladdin on Broadway. I also voice Lance Strongbow on this Disney Channel show. Once again, huge thank you to James for helping out with this episode. Yep, 
not only was he in Aladdin, of course, and Hamilton and other Broadway productions, but he voiced Flynn Rider's dear friend, Lance Strongbow, in Tangled the Series or Rapunzel's Tangled Adventure. I know the series had two names, so either one of those works for me. My days as a thief are behind me. I don't need a thief. I need a friend. Come on, Flynn. Eugene. Eugene? <laughs> Talk about your throwback. 25 clues down and one remains, and it just so happens to be the biggest clue of the game. The one clue will determine how proud of yourself you will be this weekend and for the next week until you can redeem yourself, perhaps, in next week's episode. Let's check out the Final Jeopardy category in this episode 63. Johnny Depp. Yes, sir, another Disney legend headed your way. I'm a big Johnny Depp fan, so much so that I found myself at the Johnny Depp court case. Yep, look at that. That was a fun time. I was just had nothing to do that day, so I said, why not? Anyway, this category is all about the Disney legend who was inducted as a Disney legend in 2015. So make your wagers on your knowledge of the man who brought to life Captain Jack Sparrow. Okay, time is up. It is time for the final clue of this episode 63. It's all about Johnny Depp. When discussing his creation of Captain Jack Sparrow's persona, Johnny Depp credits a portion of the pirate's personality to this 1945 Warner Brothers cartoon character. Good luck. And time is up. Captain Jack Sparrow's mannerisms and persona stem from a number of different real-life people and fictionalized characters throughout the years, as Johnny Depp has attested to. This one in particular, from 1945, is... Pepe Le Pew. There was that, and then there was a cartoon character that I loved very much as a kid named Pepe Le Pew, who was a a skunk who basically had blinders on and only saw his own reality, you know, ne could never see the, the horrors around him and didn't care, you know, um, so there was that. And that does it for episode 63 of Disney 100 Jeopardy. One final thank you to James Monroe Eigelhart for helping out with the stage and screen category this week. I really appreciate it to everyone else. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, be sure to subscribe. Click that bell icon. Hello, bell. This way, you're notified every time we come out with brand new content. Once again, I've been your host, Brian Perry. Thank you for watching. Shout out to Sean and Nick, who I met at Madison Square Garden about a week ago. Big Disney 100 Jeopardy fans and even bigger New York Ranger fans. So let's go Rangers to you guys. I'll see you guys in a week for episode 64, featuring the category of... Johnny Depp. Until then. Bye-bye.